now we're putting the chicken in the Vivor chicken plucker. Usually you run it for about a minute or so. You gotta run it with water the whole time. Boy, do we have a big day planned today. So as you can tell, we've got all kind of stuff on a trailer here. We're setting things up over here and we are going to be butchering our Cornish cross chickens today. But I'll go over kind of our setup. We have done this for many years. We're not pros at it, but I can tell you this setup flows pretty good and works pretty well. So I put two T posts in the ground and I have restraining cones and we baler twine those up. I have like, I don't know technically what it is, like a large or extra large and then one size down. These came in a kit, by the way. If I was doing it again, I only get the bigger size. If we come over here, this is our scalding tank. We run that at 130 degrees. That's what Story's Guide to Butchering Chickens book recommends. That's what I've always done, works great. This is just a normal turkey fryer uh, with water in it. All right, then they come from the scalder. This, is, this was new last year. We've only used it on eight chickens. This is a Vivor chicken plucker. Uh, we always have plucked by hand, um, but this is awesome. This is the main thing that like we love now. So anyways, I'll put a link to that in the description. What happens is the feathers come out right here Last year we used a normal five gallon bucket. This year, um, cause you spray water in here while you're doing it. So it fills with water and feathers. This year, I already had a bucket with holes in it. So I found that bucket, I'm gonna use that so some of the water drains out. Then the chickens will come over here to this table. This was a table my dad built many years ago for like, I think wallpaper, but it works great for butchering. This is where we'll be like, you know, doing the actual butchering. And then over here is kind of like a hunting kit. I typically use this knife right here. We have the sharpeners. And then we're actually gonna weigh the chickens. I like doing that. We'll get a live weight and we'll get a dressed weight, but we just use like a food scale. And then you can zero it out with that on there and then put the chicken in there. And I'll come over here and I'll show you a chicken mobile. We have found that this is the easiest way to transport the chickens. We just back up to the where we have them and we put them in the truck. We'll throw a tarp over them here while we're doing it to keep them shaded. These chickens are from Meyer Hatchery. They're about eight and a half, nine weeks old. Cornish crosses. So I'm gonna show you the basically the process that we use. I'm not gonna show like the dispatching of the chicken or anything. The first thing we do, is weigh the chicken so we've zeroed out the bowl here we have a food scale they usually actually stay pretty steady you got it okay she got the weight we'll write that down on our sheet here we also mark whether they're roosters or hens that one weighed nine pounds four and a half ounces it's actually our biggest one yet. Okay, so this is one of the roosters. We've dispatched it, and now this is our scalding tank. We usually do, like I said, 130 degrees, 140 degrees for like 30 to 40 seconds. And then um, we'll pull it out of here and put that thing in the Vivor chicken plucker. So now we're putting the chicken in the Vivor chicken plucker, which is amazing. Usually you run it for about a minute or so. You gotta run it with water the whole time. Get it you gotta kinda clean those feathers off them around everything. See how good of a job that does? And then what happens is everything comes out the bottom right there. All right, so right out of the chicken plucker, that's what we've got. I mean, basically nothing on there. If you take a look at that, I mean, it is like, what, one right there. This side of the chicken looks great. And then you always have that little bit on the tail, but that's pretty much what they always look like coming out of the plucker. I start out 
by kind of cracking that leg open and cut right here. And again, guys, I am not a professional at all. I have been doing chickens for a lot of years, but it doesn't mean I'm a professional. So you get that cut off, then we'll cut the head off. If I was getting into it nowadays, if you guys are thinking about it, I would somehow like save money to make sure I had a plucker. We haven't been doing this near the amount of time, anywhere near the amount of time that we would have done before we had a plucker. But then what I do is I make an incision from here up. Like that. And then you're gonna to wanna to pull the insides out. But you kinda of need to like cut around the anus which is connect, I have it here, and right there it is. So you kinda wanna like, go down and do that. If you don't restrict your birds from feed for like 12 or 24 hours, then uh, poop basically will go flying everywhere. So we have the anus out, stick your hand up in there, and basically just start grabbing. Pull your intestines out. It's nothing on that that we're gonna keep right there. But this next one here, I've got the liver and I've got the heart right there. The gallbladder right here needs to be cut off from the liver and you wanna really make sure you don't cut that open and get bile everywhere. Then you just reach up in there the next thing I'm pulling out is the crop. See how that's coming here? And the windpipe or esophagus, whatever you want to call it, it's connected to that. We'll get rid of that. Had some lung come out there with it. The lung's real easy to miss. It's this, it's real spongy like. And that's it guys, I'm done. I mean, with the plucker, it, it just makes it, it's a game changer. So here's the bird, okay, right here you go, there's one last step I do have to do, the tail has a gland here that you want to cut off, you can kind of see a protrusion there, you can do it at any stage of the process, but cut that off like that, and then we're basically done. Now what we'll do is we'll move these birds over and we'll weigh them now and get basically like a dress weight on them. So this bird started out weighing eight pounds, 0 0.2 ounces, and it dressed out at five pounds, 13.3 ounces. So here's the Excel file that I made from all of our weights. Uh, you have the different chickens here and whether they were hen or rooster. I did take out chicken number 10 um, because he was an outlier. He only weighed like two pounds, I think, I don't know if it was a different breed mixed in or whatever, but you basically have your live weight and then I had to express everything in ounces. So this is just the ounces um, equivalent of this. And this is your dressed weight, same thing, dressed weight ounces here. And this is your yield. And basically the main thing to take away from this chart is we yielded. So after we basically butchered the chicken and dressed it, we yielded 73.5% of the live weight. The other thing to take away is our chickens had an average live weight of 7.71 .71 pounds and an average dressed weight of 5.67. So these chickens were, uh, I think, eight and a half weeks old. Um, so that just kind of gives you an idea of what to look for when you do your chicken. Before we put them in the cooler, we rinse them off real good. And then what you're gonna wanna do, guys, is you're gonna wanna put these in a cooler on ice or doesn't really matter what you do. If you're just doing a couple, you can put them in the fridge. But you're gonna wanna age them for a couple days. The reason why you do that is so the rigor mortis doesn't lock into the meat and make it tougher. After a couple days, the muscles will release tension and your meat will be a lot more tender. 
we got that guy cleaned out. Take it over here. Here's our cooler. There's basically, well, I guess 20 chickens in there right now. This is one of the big marine coolers. And we'll, there's ice down in there and then we'll top it off more with ice, let it set a couple days. And the next stage will be cutting these things up into pieces and vacuum sealing them. So it's now been three days later. We butchered the chickens on a Sunday and today is a Wednesday. It's actually my birthday, by the way. Um, fun times, right? Anyways, so we're packaging up the chicken. Got the cooler right here. And I'll show you how we do that. But that's the chickens in there. We've already started. I think we've done, I don't know, seven chickens or something. But we use cookie sheets and uh, just kind of separate everything. So these are the quarters, the thighs and the legs. Over here's the breasts. They're kind of double stacked. That's the wings. But my wife is working on one now and I figured I'd kind of film it, but she's got the wings cut off of the chicken. Right now she's taking a leg quarter off. This goes by pretty fast. Um, I don't know, maybe about five minutes a bird once you get the hang of it there. Gonna cut the other leg quarter off. You break that bone there, then you can get your knife in between that joint. Quarter comes right off. All right, that's two quarters off. When you do the breast here, you just wanna run when you insert the knife, you gotta figure out on what side of the bone you're on, and then just hug that bone all the way down through there as you come down. These chickens, uh, I feel like the breasts are a lot bigger than what you can buy generally. Maybe unless you go to specialty type grocery stores and pay tons of money, but I mean, they're eight week old Cornish crosses, but they are big old breasts on those things. She's just gonna find the other side of that bone there. Cut right alongside of it. Peel it back just like that. Right there's your other breast. Basically have your carcass done. You can see that bone there in the middle. The breast come off either side here. And then on the wings, um, we take the tips off and we just discard those. I mean, they're not, there's nothing on those. If you've never done one before, it's very helpful to pull that joint kind of backwards from its natural rotation and separate it. Um, and then you can get your knife there in between. Same thing here, you've got your joint there. Separate it, get your knife in between. Right there's your two wing pieces. And that is basically the whole chicken cut up, guys. Give you a good view of it right there. The two breasts, both wings, in the two leg quarters. So if you're wondering, this took us an hour. We cut up 18 birds. We processed 21 birds, but we're leaving three whole. And these are the whole birds right there. We had one that was like, I don't even know. I don't know if it was a different variety or what, but it was super small. But that'll be like a Cornish game hen. So we're starting out vacuum sealing the couple whole birds that we did which really isn't much. I think we only have two or three. We buy the vacuum sealer bags, number one, off-brand, and number two, um, make your own size. So you cut them to length. 
which works really good for this. So it's pulled everything out there and then it's sealing the top. Yeah, so we got all the breast in the bags ready to go. There's one being vacuum sealed. Seal in there. What you have to do on these make your own bags, you have to go through and we cut them all to length and then you have to seal one end of them and then we package them all up and then we seal the other end. This is all the chicken vacuum sealed now. Really doesn't take all that long. Anyways guys, I'm gonna go ahead and throw this chicken in the freezer. I hope you guys liked this video. And if you did, I'll put a video up here about where I did an assembly and a review video on the Vivor chicken plucker. If you're interested in it, go out there and check that video out and we will see you guys again next time. Y'all have a good one.